Clark. I'm your Nature Township Supervisor, and I'm happy to welcome you all today. Um, just wanted to say hello. I know you're all here because of Jan's side of the office, but just wanted to give a little heads up on some of the other things going on at Nutria Township. You might also know us from our food pantry downstairs. We also offer various other kinds of financial assistance um, to those who are in need here, especially in the areas of senior services, youth services, those with developmental, physical disabilities, or mental illness. So do check our website for more details. Most importantly, it's our community support grants for families who are supporting loved ones in their home with a disability. Those, the deadline for that grant application is on the 20th. Um, also upcoming is our child care scholarships for summer camp. So check our website and sign up for our bi-weekly newsletter for details. Thank you all. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, I'm Leonard Shifflett. I'm the Deputy Township Assessor. Uh, I'm filling in for Jan, who's here, but uh, wanted me to speak because she was a little hoarse uh, for such a large crowd. Uh, you're all here for the Property Tax Appeal Workshop. This will concern your opportunity to appeal to the Board of Review. Just as a reminder, you'll hear this several times, the last day to file your appeal is January 25. Um, you're going to have an opportunity to meet with members of the staff of the uh, uh, of the board of uh, review. And if you need to, you're welcome to contact the township. Uh, Jan is here. I'm here to help you. Uh, uh, the best way to contact us is through email, uh, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Um, we have several people who are here to, this evening supporting this program. Scott Britton, who is our a Cook County Commissioner uh, for, for our district. And uh, the most important person here tonight from the Board of Review is Samantha Steele, who is a newly elected commissioner. And uh, we are in her district and we're very proud to have her help us uh, through this appeal process. So I'll turn it over to Samantha. Wait, wait, I would uh, like to invite oh. Scott, uh, Commissioner Britton to, to speak and introduce you. himself. He's so I am Scott Britton. I'm your Cook County Commissioner. Newly minted, as I used to, my district used to end at the Edens, but I now have all of Nutra Township within my district. So as of November, I am your Cook County Commissioner. And the first thing I did when I was elected in 2018 was I had one of these uh, events in Northbrook. And I gave a little spiel and I talked about some of the things we were going to do for the assessor's office. This is the board review, also designed to help you with your appeals process for your property taxes. And the first person to raise their hand was somebody in the front row who said, and who are you? Uh, which I get a lot of because uh, Cook County government is not very well known. We call it a stealth government, but we do a lot of important things. We do public safety, which is the, the jail, the sheriff, the state's attorney, the court system. We do the public health system within Cook County, uh, Strozier and Providence Hospital and the 14th clinics all over Cook County. We did a lot of work with uh, COVID uh, and still do. And then we also do what I'm wearing today, the forest reserves, which are under my jurisdiction as a Cook County commissioner. And our budget's almost $9 billion. And we also have other smaller things that we do, which are also more related to independently elected individuals who do work for you. And Samantha Steele is one of those. She is a board review elected official. We work together to try to help you do one thing, pay the right amount of taxes. Now, I know you don't want to pay any taxes, neither do I. <laughs> but we have to have a government, it's important, and we have to fund it. And we do that through property taxes under the Illinois system, which we can talk about later. But the reason we want to do it right is because if your property taxes are much higher than your neighbor who has the same house as you, that's not right. And that's why we're here, to make sure you're paying the right amount. And so, uh, like uh, me, Samantha is new to this area, but she is now your Board of Review Commissioner, and she'll take it from here. Hi. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank um, Township Assessor Jan Churchwell. Um, oh, there's, a, there's a line. I have to stand over the... <laughs> I've crossed the line. It won't be the first time this evening. Um, I want to thank you, Township Assessor Churchwell, um, Trustee uh, uh, Gail Eidenberg, and Commissioner Scott Britton for being here tonight, and all of you for coming. Um, uh, the, the people in the back of you come in, we have a sign-in sheet to the left there if you hadn't, or you can come up here to these individuals. Um, and I would also like to thank my staff who volunteered to come out this evening to help ensure that you were able to file your appeals. 
Um, as many of you know, the appeal deadline is the 25th for new Trier. Uh, we are in a, a tri reassessment, and I think we have a slideshow coming. So I don't know, Jake, should I? Yeah, are you ready? Before I start going through the slides and having it. So we've done this far. <laughs> and and bear with us. This is our first go through tonight. So you guys are all getting hits. Yeah. And we've done this. All right. So the board of review, it's a property tax appeal board asked for the county assessor. The county assessor sets value for close to two million parcels in Cook County. And then if you you have the opportunity to appeal at the assessor level, if you are not satisfied with your appeal there, then you come on to the board of review. We are sort of the oversight agency for the assessor. Um, you do not have to pay to file an appeal at the board. And as property owners, residential property owners, you don't have to hire an attorney. So feel free to just come to our office, go online or to one of our outreach events and file your appeal. I've been told to cross the line. <laughs> um, so, uh, many of you know, Cook County, we do a triannual reassessment. The northern suburbs are reassessed. Um, this year is 2022. Then we have the, the southern suburbs in 2023, and then the city again in 2024. So this is the first year since 2019 that we've had a reassessment. Um, benefits of appealing your property taxes. So you will not see an increase in your assessment. And as I said, there is no fee to, a, um, to file an appeal. Uh, grounds for appealing. There are several grounds for appealing. We have lack of uniformity, which I think most of us are, are concerned in, in making sure that our, our property is valued the same as our neighbor's property or similar type of property. Um, if you purchased your home within the last three years, that's a great example of market value. And then you have something to say, like, look, we just bought this house. It is We purchased it for less than what the assessor has it. You know, please correct the assessment um, or a factual error. If you have removed a, a garage, for example, and then you know the assessor never picked that up or it, it failed to get to them, um, if they have the the year that your house was built with the square footage off, uh, these are important features that you want to make sure that are correct on your property record card. And then we have um, they call it vacancy. I don't like to call it vacancy. I don't know that there's a flood, a natural disaster. So if you've had a fire. Um, if you're unable to inhabit your house for some reason or another, you want to make sure that that's reflected on your assessments. Um, so we're here in the new Trier Township. Um, in 2021, the Board of Review settled, and my eyesight is awful, we're at 34%. So this is the end of your tribe. We had the tribe assessment in 2019. And at that point, we saw 66% of the appeals that were filed. So we do encourage you to file at the beginning of the tribe so that you can experience the benefit over the three years. I am going to have my chief deputy, Samantha. We like to keep things simple. We're both Samanthas. <laughs> explain the process of how you can go through and file your appeal. I just want you to know that we're here to help you. Any questions or concerns, please direct it to myself or one of my staff members. We'd like to make sure that you have filed your appeal this evening and that we can get back to you with anything that we might need to help make your appeal successful. So again, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. And hi to everyone online. Thanks for joining us. So um, this part will be just a little bit interesting because there are some things that I want the folks online to do and um, some special things for you folks in the room. Uh, but first, we will kick off with what to include to support your residential appeal. So as the commissioner mentioned, um, there are a couple of things we're looking for. We talked about uh, comparables. So two of those things are comparable properties. Um, again, when you're filing your appeal, you want to make sure that you have something that is substantially comparable to your property and that it's uniform. However, we also look that up at the board for you. So if by chance you don't have a substantial amount of comps or anything to share with us, 
we will take that on for you. For sales, however, we do ask that you keep an eye on what's going on in your neighborhood. There are different ways to look that up as well. And if you could share that information with us, that will provide us with evidence to understand what's happening in your neighborhood, what's sold for what, and how that's comparable to your property. Um, so some ways to look up what's going on, uh, you can go to cookcountyviewer.gov. That will show you what's happening on your block. Again, that's www.cookcountyviewer.gov. The other opportunity is through the Cook County Assessor's website. Uh, if you look specifically under Find Comparable Properties, um, you will be able to do a search for what's happening in your, um, in your area, what, um, uh, look at, at the different sales and, and what's available for um, uniformity. So that's at cookcountyassessor.com. So the things we're looking for, um, the commissioner also mentioned factual error. Again, you give that to us, we can um, make some corrections. However, typically the board does not change characteristics. So if you submit information about characteristics changes to your property, you may have an opportunity to um, uh, receive some relief for one year, but ultimately that change does have to go to the Cook County Assessor. And I know someone in the room mentioned a special case about that. So we can talk about that um, at the end. Um, vacancy, it's written, or the commissioner doesn't like that word, but <laughs> if there is, um, if, if there was some issue with your property, again, if there was a fire or anything like that, you would have some sort of evidence of that. So photos, if you have any documentation of a police report or things like that, it's really important that you submit that evidence to us so we can see it and use that in order to make a determination. All right, so condominiums, uh, this is, um, condominiums uh, are, work a little bit differently from single family homes. We do have a condo specialist here that can help anyone who's in that situation to talk through that. Um, essentially for your condos, uh, what we're looking at is the percentage of interest you have in the condo times the value of the property itself. So that helps us make a, de a determination of what else is happening in the condos. Condos are a special place. Townhouses are also a special case. Um, those are um, uh, particularly, no, so next slide. Uh, those are particularly around market value. Um, again, we can assist you with those if you have a townhouse or a condo. Um, we have some specialists who can walk you through those details of filing an appeal. Exemptions. Um, this is a bit of um, a treat sometimes. Uh, this is an example of what your second installment bill will look like. You will see um, any exemptions you have on this bill. So if you look on the slide um, on the bottom left-hand corner where it's circled, that's an example of where someone has received um, exemptions. There are about eight different exemptions that you could apply for if you're eligible. Um, we'll quick, quickly go through those. So first is a homeowner exemption. Um, it's the easiest one uh, to get. You own your home, you uh, submit it to the assessor's office or to your township assessor and they can get filed for you. Home improvement exemption. Um, this is a, a special one for anyone who's doing renovations on your property, anything that's significant to your property, you're eligible for an exemption um, up to about four years. Um, there's a senior exemption, uh, which if you're 65 or older, you qualify for. So um, you definitely want to make sure that if you are of age that you um, have that exemption listed on your second installment bill. There's also the senior freeze, which um, has an income uh, restriction on it. So that's for anyone 65 or older who makes $65,000 or less. Um, the last four exemptions are for, uh, there are two for veterans, one for returning vets from active duty, uh, for vets with disabilities. And um, there's also persons with disabilities. And um, the most specialized exemption is the long-time homeowner exemption. Uh, to be clear, only about one to two percent of the population of Cook County um, property owners qualify for this. And typically that uh, you are mailed that exemption directly from the Cook County Assessor's Office. But if you think you qualify, definitely reach out um, because we want to make sure that you're receiving every exemption that you're eligible for. Is All there right. a year involved in that homeowner, the long-time exemption? Uh, yeah. The 
there there are a lot of specifications. So it's not just it's it's not one point. I think there are about 12 different qualifications, which is why only a, a small percentage of the population qualifies for them and why they know it. Yeah. It, if it were that easy, I promise I would share it with you. Okay, so we're gonna get into filing an appeal. Uh so um Today, uh, for those of you online, uh, this is for the folks in the room. Um, I know typically at these events, we have lots of paper appeals. We do have some available. Um, however, for ease of use and for tracking for you all, we are hoping to get you all signed up for um, uh, to receive information electronically about your appeal. We can get you signed up and registered today. Um, there's a good handful of you in the room who we got registered pretty early ahead of the event, and um, the rest of you, if you're interested, we can take care of you afterwards. Can we can go up there and see. Yes. In the room. Yes, in the room. We can take care of you in the room. For folks online, uh, we have our instructions listed, so I'll walk through them. Uh, but essentially, uh, you want to go to cookcountyboardofreview.com. Um, there is a yellow goldish button at the top of the page that says submit an appeal. And I know that's a little tricky if you're registering, but think about. Uh, so what we um, so uh, submit an appeal is what you want to click on because that's the action you want to take. If you already have an account, you you're familiar with this process, but for those of you who don't, um, you can easily register once you hit submit an appeal. Um, there is a login registration button. It's pretty self-explanatory where you fill in, um, you create a username and password just like any other site, um, your email address, and then you confirm it. So you should receive an email confirmation for the folks in the room. For the folks in the room, you should have received um, a confirmation if you register today. So feel free to pull out your mobile devices and give it a double check right now. Um, for folks online, you will um, if you can do this as we're talking through it and register. Um, also, for anyone who is not registered and is interested in doing so while you're sitting in the room, feel free to do this while I'm talking through it. That'll make this process faster for us if you're going to be filing at the end of the night. Um, in the past, uh, this was all very brand new to our government. So there was a little bit of complication on how to reset your password. It's all pretty straightforward now. Um, you all have seen this on other sites that you've used. So if you have an issue, if you've forgotten your password or if you need a new one, you can easily reset it and it will go to your email. All right, so after you log into your account, you wanna click on submit an appeal. And if you have already had an account, uh, you can go to my appeals and check what has happened in the past or after we file your appeal for you today, that's where you will go to check and see what the status is and what's happening with that file under my appeals. Um, again, the process is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, you want to select the, um, the issue, the reason why you're uh, applying or, or why you're appealing, and that's because your property was overassessed. Uh, you need your pen. Um, I think everyone in this room and probably online has their pen available. We've talked through that today. So make sure you have that handy to enter it. And one key thing is that um, you do not want to register as an attorney, unless of course you are an attorney and you're registered and you're registering um, on behalf of a, a, a business. And then you select I'm not a robot and you'll go through. Everyone in this room is human. So uh, after that, um, if in a special case, um, you have additional pins. So I know I talked to someone earlier who has a pin for their home and a pin, separate pin for their garage. Um, you wanna go ahead and add the associated pin um, into the filing. So it's all grouped under your name and in your profile. Otherwise you can just push through this next part. Um, then you um, will enter your um, information. It's gonna double check your email and select next to continue. Um, and you will receive a um, readout that is similar to the example on the screen that has collected all of the information you've submitted. You wanna review that and make sure it's accurate because if it's not, then we're gonna send it back or there may be a no change. So you wanna make sure that we have the right PIN number, the right property address, and that you've submitted the correct evidence for us to be able to review your appeal. 
So if there's anything in there that isn't right, at the bottom of that screen, it's pretty hard to see, but right next to the Cook County Board of Review logo, there's a blue button that says update. You can make changes when you select that update button. Yeah. Um, in the event that um, you would prefer to uh, file a paper appeal, again, we do have them available here for the folks online. If you are interested in filling out by hand a form, you can download a paper form from our website, print it out, fill out the information. A couple key things to remember with the paper form is that we absolutely must have your correct information. That includes your name, your address, your PIN number, and a signature. You have to sign off on the appeal. Otherwise, we won't be able to process it. Um, this is just an example of a paper appeal form. As you can see, the text in there, it's clear the person's name, the address, and there's a signature. There's some spaces on the form that are for the Board of Reviews uh, specifically, so no need to worry about that. Um, all right, so we're wrapping up here. Um, some common errors, which I've already sort of mentioned when filing an appeal. So again, signature on the paper appeal, crucial. Um, confirming on the online appeal, crucial. Actually, if you will get an error, you won't be able to go through without confirming. Um, and, and make sure that your um, address is correct and that your PIN matches your property. So uh, again, double check everything, especially online. You know, sometimes our fingers slip one wrong digit on a PIN. It's just an incorrect PIN. So um, be sure to double, even triple check those things. Um, and then uh, if you need to file for multiple properties, you need to, you will have to file multiple appeals. You can't do it all on one, so just be careful about that um, if you have other properties that you're looking at. Um, and then just general guidelines. Um, uh, once you file an appeal, you are allowed to request a hearing. Um, as residents, you must uh, represent yourself. You can't be represented by a third party. Um, if the unless the property is owned by a corporate, but if you are filing the appeal and it is your it is your um, property, you can't send you know your cousin or your aunt or your uncle or your child to go to the hearing on behalf of you. You have to show up for yourself. Um, the uh, filing deadline, as everyone in this uh, room who has spoken already has mentioned, is January 25th, so it's right around the corner, which is why we wanted to come here today and help you all out and talk to you about it. Um, again, thank you for being our first group that we're doing this with. Um, and then um, the hearings, uh, you, again, you have an option to request that, and we can provide more information about that after you filed. Uh-oh. <laughs> And the last thing is to know, um, you know, once you've done all this work of filing an appeal, you want to know how does the Board of Review reach a decision? Well, um, there are three elected officials to the Board of Review. You all fall in District 2 with Commissioner Steele. Each district will look at the appeal and make a determination um, and then share it um, after they have completed their review and their decision to the next uh, district. So there are three sets of eyes that will review your appeal and determine whether there should be a change or no change. Once it's viewed by all three districts, the majority rules on the decision, and then you will be informed of what happens. So um, in conclusion, um, January 25th is your deadline. We're happy to get you set up here today. Uh, for folks online, please be sure to um, file your appeal online as soon as possible. Um, make sure you register. If you have any complications, um, let us know. Do check your bills uh, to make sure you're receiving all of your exemptions that are available to you. And we will let you know um, a decision uh, once um, we've gone through this process. Um, I think that's it. We're um, happy to uh, take questions. Again, I want to thank the, um, the rest of the staff for coming out and being here and available to you all. For the folks online, give us a call at 312-603-5542 um, if you have any issues or any questions, and we look forward to helping you all. Thank you thank so you. much. Let's go over the... Uh...
like the decision process once once more sure who looks at it you said it was three people yes so there are three yes so um the the board of commissioner is made up of uh, three commissioners each of them represents a district within a county one of three districts and so um because the board of review is representative of the entire county even though um, Commissioner Steele is re represents District Two. We see all of the um, we see all of the appeals that come through and have a review of them. We want to make sure that everyone is paying, you know, their fair share, that they are properly assessed. We want to make sure that there aren't any errors. So um, there are multiple eyes to review. Uh, so District One, District Two, District Three, um, each has a set of eyes on it. Um, sometimes in no particular order, we have a system that is built on anonymity. So um, as you're yeah. as you've submitted your appeal, if an analyst has wrapped up their review of their last appeal, they select the next one. It comes into the queue. They have a, a review. Once they're finished, the, the analyst that's open in the next district and the queue will take it on and take a look. And so because there are three, um, you know, if two um, analysts agree on a decision of change, or a no change, um, then typically um, that's the decision. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Are you going to talk about the evidence that we need to submit in support of our appeal and how and when we do that? Or is that a later? Uh, so it depends on um, why you're filing your appeal, what evidence you submit. So we can, um, I'm, I'm happy to talk about that. Uh, we can talk about it later. I, we have one more question. Maybe we can come back to that. Yeah. Hi. Oh, we'll take the minute. Yes. <laughs> um, if we are filing an appeal based on market value, not necessarily uniformity, is there a recommended set of criteria to use when comparing it to other properties? Um, so the sales data um, is going to be the most helpful thing for us. So if there are recent sales, you want to share as many of those as possible with us and, um, and and any additional details about your property that lets us know that it is comparable to those that have recently sold. So you're using age, square footage mm -hmm. within the same school district is very helpful. You would like to as much as it's possible. Or, or is it more, for example, I don't know, maybe on the same street, which one is more important? Um, I don't know. Same street, and it's a newer property, you may not want to use that. If it's, it's the same street and you're about the same, you know, age, then that's a great comparable for you. There, there are a number of factors that go into it. So th those are the main ones. Also, um, you know, bathrooms, like all of those things factor in. So garages, all the amenities yeah. that you would have, you want to make sure that the property that you're comparing it to has the same information. Um, so uh, if you're looking for comparable properties or sales, um, the best, uh, so for properties, again, we can assist with that. Um, we will look that up. We have a system that allows us to look um, in your neighborhood and in your surrounding area to see what comparable properties exist if you think that um, you have been over-assessed. However, if you would like to take a look for yourself as well, you can go to uh, countyviewer.gov and um, we're happy to write that down and share that with you too. So um, you can take a look at it, but that's the opportunity to see what's going on on your block. Or you can go to the assessor's website and there is a button that says comparable properties that allows you to put in your address and you can see what is similar to your property in your area. Okay. Uh, at the Cook County Assessor. Oh. Um, hi, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having a problem with breathing today, so I can't project very well over the phone. But um, one of the best ways to find out the evidence you need to submit comparable properties, market values, call us. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we prefer by now coming up at the end. Uh, if you need an appointment, I much rather to be able to go as much as possible. But that, that's what I, that's what we do. Um, the the commissioner staff 
They have yeah, equal cool ways to one point eight million, million yeah. property yeah. 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 They have to just compare yeah. everybody as they can. We don't have to look dirty in that. That is the truth. My job is to all of you to So we we are here to have a good it is very helpful for you to use your local resources, just as mentioned. So, yes. Is the evidence to challenge the assessment the same set of evidence we use to file an appeal? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, where yeah. are those paper forms? Uh, we have a couple around when you're ready. We can get you set up. If there's not, I mean, can I have one out? Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. we can get you one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Kari is going to the back to grab uh, that. Ralph that Ralph right here. Right Do you want to fill it out here or to yeah. Okay. Yes. We can help you understand the broad range of per square footage is that the value for similar properties. And I mean, I'm just keep thinking of that part of the address, but. Can you please say I'm sorry checking in no, I'm like saying, yeah, yeah. I, I get, okay yeah yeah I right when the boss files the appeal no. that there is a broad, broad range uh of assessment per square footage valuation on improvements in the property for very similar properties, you know, things that have properties that have four and five and six parameters in common. What could it count for you? Um, we're not the assessment's office. My advice um, to you would be to use the median square footage. So the price per square foot, the median price, that's kind of where you as an appealant would want to hang out. If it, if it comes to a hearing, would anybody on the board be inclined to you give a specific answer to that question. Maybe. I, I case dependent. I would have to look at the you know the, the evidence that you put forth and say that this is why. So yeah, we would be able to to explain it to you, but I couldn't tell you why without having the the exact information. If you're talking on more of a meta level as to the variance, the Cook County Assessor's Office did just do a webinar also at the same time and should be uh, as opposed to supposed to be explaining how the new algorithm works. So hopefully that's up on their way. And then, you know we do have some variances here in Clark County and, and I've discussed this with others. Um our neighborhood the assessor neighborhood isn't exactly what you and I would say our neighborhoods are. Um, and they are working at simplifying, more delineating the neighborhoods to better represent smaller areas. Um, it's a task, and and they're working on it. But in the meantime, that's where you can come to our office, and we can help ensure that you're not paying who you should be. So, slight question. So, when you do file the appeal. Um, would you choose the median of all properties in your code in the neighborhood, or is that a bit excessive to send in? Would you just choose a few? Okay, so I knew. I thought he actually worked in our office. Yeah, he's. He just found an open chair. I personally would use the median of of all or a subset. Do you want me to give you a lot or a little? No, no, no. <laughs> compare most specifically yeah. for your property. Like you can use all of them, but the assessor uses all of them, and it doesn't necessarily represent your property. I mean, you the medium, or we could use the average. Okay. Um, sometimes um, when I'm working a uh, 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 file, I see a comp that has is exact like the subject, and I'll pick that, and that's the number I'll come up with. So. A lot of times I use the average, but sometimes I'll use the median. It, it, it all depends, you know, when I'm looking at the file, you know, they give you that choice which one you want to use when you make it, when you when you make that decision. The median is the most helpful. Yeah, so, yeah. so you want to go on the median, median is where we want it. But yeah. at, at, like giving us everything, if there are, if the your place. neighborhood is not uniform, if it, if it has a number of different property types in your neighborhood, that's not so helpful of giving us everything. So that's the most comparable. Within the exact 
last square footage. Yes. Big property big. size, like literally. If, if you, if, as, much like as, you 20, can, as much you as you want, twenty. You want three. I would do six. <laughs> I, I, I think five six, to six. six. And six, and six to like, look, there are enough mm -hmm. at that point. Like, realistically, we have one point eight million properties mm -hmm. to look at. If you give me six, I'm like, great. John gave me six. They look like his property. He's done. Cool. So, John gives so, me twenty. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Here, here's here's the thing when when as as we get busy as the season progresses we don't have time to look at 20 to 25 yeah so if you give like the commissioner said six that's fine that's easy but 20 we got to look at each one and then another one gives me 25. so how do you submit this evidence comparable property either online or in the paper form uh so uh you can do either uh we prefer that you do it online uh given our capacity today we can get you started if you have um, electronic evidence with you when you go home you can log back into your account and upload those but if you have um physical evidence that can be attached to the paper appeal and that all needs to go together so if you're doing the paper form you would attach it to the complaint form Correct. Is that right? Yes, that's yeah. correct. Yes. Okay. But the evidence doesn't have to be submitted until two weeks after the complaint. If you do it online. If you, yeah. Yes. If you do it online, you have time. You have two but if you do it in if the paper, they require. require it. Yes, it requires. It's just logistically, because we want to, it's paper. You know, we want to make sure we have everything together, that we can scan it all and upload it all at once. And so you have your record and all of your papers are together. Yes. And can the paper be filed in person or is it only by mail? Uh, you're welcome to come. Yeah, you can also do it here with us. You can also do it with your township assessor. Yes. 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 If we have, if, if Jan has stamped it the 25th, we will accept it. Mm -hmm. And we will be here if necessary at 1159. My bedtime is like 9 30. <laughs> Regarding the last three year sales, um, I personally didn't buy my house within the last three years, but I did a refinancing on it. It's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Does that mean it does? It does. It's a lot of weight. Yes. Please, like. If you received an appraisal, well, there was no appraisal, but you know the financing company obviously attaches a value to the property. That's part of the financing that they didn't do that appraisal. We are um, required to follow certain laws. It's called the Uniform Sale Appraisal Act. We can't use that um, without permission from the appraiser. That. That performs and the bank doesn't provide it to you, we can't technically use it because I've taken those courses and I'm bound to those those laws. Um I would just in a narrative have you know, the house was refinanced. This is what we refinanced for. This is what the bank said. Okay. Maybe I have some of the documents where they it doesn't put have... a lot of weight. I'm just to be no, honest with it. you because of the restrictions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, before those, those people are still going to be here. Yeah. yeah. So I, I was just going to say before we one second. Um, before so who is interested um uh, uh in filing an online appeal today? Without any evidence. What? Yes. Without evidence, mind you, you you have time. You have the two weeks, so you can go home and upload any evidence you have. But if you're interested in doing an online version, um. Uh, we, we have these folks in the back who can help you out. If you, um, is there, can you raise your hand for me if you're interested in doing that? Okay. Oh, yes. Somebody there help me with the password reset. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, is there anyone who is here to file a paper appeal? Um, no, not, I just, just this form. I filled it out. Oh, yes. I, okay. Um, and we have one other person. Okay, awesome. Um, did we help everyone else? 